Hi there, I'm Tainari, forest watcher of the Avidia Forest. My duty is to preserve both the rainforest's ecosystem and the safety of its visitors. If this is your first time here, <laughs> I suggest you first peruse the Avidia Forest Survival Guide, paying particular attention to the chapter, distinguishing between edible and poisonous mushrooms. If you press a leaf between dry sheets of paper, you can make an attractive and handy bookmark. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's all part of the learning process. The value of knowledge cannot simply be quantified in monetary terms. I'm used to the rain, but you should probably use an umbrella. I applied a plant-based waterproofing oil to my tail. One swish and it's dry. Mm, the thunder's so loud. Uh, my head hurts. I don't see weather like this very often. Oh, are, are you cold? I don't see weather like this very often. Oh, are, are you cold? If you want, you can tuck your hands into my tail. My ears, my ears, they're gonna be blown inside out. Uh, it's so hot, even a mist flower would melt in this heat. Uh, now that I think about it, it, it wouldn't, but y you get what I mean. <sighs> Shh, listen. That's the sound of dew dripping upon the leaves. During lunch breaks, I like to sit in a tree and admire the sunlight streaming through the canopy. If I'm not careful, I'll fall asleep. <laughs> Good evening. I'm preparing to go observe bioluminescent flora. Wanna come? Get some sleep. I'll be on guard duty. It'll be a good time to write today's patrol log entry. I studied botany in the Amorta Darshan. My academic advisor wanted me to join the faculty after graduation, but to be quite honest, I prefer a somewhat freer research environment. <sighs> From my observations, the way that the academia handles certain matters leaves much to be desired. Fortunately, my advisor didn't push the issue. <laughs> Not like that would have worked. Hmm. Many people think that my kind are loners, and I don't blame them for thinking that. The few of us around are mostly scholars, and we're always chasing our research, so you'd be lucky to spy a single tuft of tail fur in a whole year. Like my father, for example. He's an entomologist, and lately he's been studying the evolution of beetles in the desert. I have no intention of joining him. I'm ashamed to admit that I don't tolerate the sun very well. Prolonged exposure turns my brain and body into mush. I believe that the best way to achieve mutual understanding with someone is to spend time with them. Other methods are less realistic. That's why there is no need to rush introductions. Time will settle everything. Are we officially friends? What, so this sort of thing needs official documentation now? Ah, uh, okay then. Well... Hand over your friendship certificate. I assume it'll need my signature. I remember praying as a kid that if I were lucky enough to receive a vision, it had to be a dendro one. It wasn't because of research. I just wanted to make a vine ladder to reach high-hanging fruit. I've heard about the Aranara for some time now, but I haven't personally seen any. Sometimes I hear rustling sounds from the forest's depths, but they disappear when I go closer. That's a good thing, though. At least they know how to protect themselves. <sighs> Unlike those stupid adventurers whose first thought when they run into an Avidia leopard is, oh, maybe I'll form an interspecies friendship today. <sighs> Don't worry about Karkata. I told the Matra I know that it's my research assistant. If anyone wants to do anything to it, they'll need to go through me. Since you seem to care a lot about Karkata, why don't you enroll in some courses at the Spantamod Darshan? That way, you can care for it even if I'm gone. Did you know that plants can camouflage themselves? Some mimic insects or birds to intimidate their natural predators. Others produce bait to attract pollinators. And still others are obligate carnivores that utilize enticing fragrances or honey to lure in their prey. Hmm... I feel like I'm not just talking about plants anymore. <sighs> when that child was first brought here, she was effectively illiterate. It wasn't a huge issue, though. She's a hard worker and a diligent student, so she's made good progress. Still, her goal is to learn advanced medical techniques, so she still has a long way to go. She sometimes puts too much pressure on herself. Oh, uh, 
Help her out when you can, would you? Consider it a favor for me as her mentor. Thanks a lot. You want to see Sino? Well, firstly, a word of caution. If he ever comes chasing you down for work-related reasons, prepare for the nightmare of a lifetime. Other than that, General Mahamatra is a high-ranking position, so it usually isn't easy to find him. But he does occasionally go to Gandharvaville to see Kale. As much as he might want to stay unnoticed, he can't fool my ears. After my advisor's rescue, I wrote him a letter to send my regards. To my surprise, he wrote back saying that someone had already given him my regards in person. He ended the letter with a question. The General Mahamatra said he hopes that the sages will enjoy a more tasteful reputation, thanks to the efforts of our darshan. Whatever do you suppose he meant by a more tasteful reputation? It's a good question. I'd like to know, too. Uh, be careful of Alhatham. I'm not saying he's a bad guy, but he purely operates by rationality, so people often find his actions unacceptable. If you don't believe me, just ask his roommate. Thanks to Alhatham, he has more pent-up frustration than an angry animal slime. <laughs> Kave is a famous architect in Sumeru. The palace of Alcazarzare is his magnum opus. During the initial planning, he even asked me to recommend suitable ornamental flora. I don't know why or how, but he ended up heavily in debt after the palace was completed. All Haytham is helping out by letting him stay at his place, but... I, I don't know whether that's a blessing or a curse. The renowned Lord Songama Bay is none other than Dori. I became acquainted with her through a previous research project. It had required very rare materials, and the only way I could get them was through her and her mysterious supply network. Uh, never you mind what I was buying and what I was researching. Thank you very much. I've heard of her. The famous sleepwalking eccentric. The rumors about her sleepwalking are really quite absurd. Feats of superhuman strength, sprinting through Aru village at night, scaling the wall of Samiel with her bare hands. Some even say that she can write a hundred thousand word thesis while asleep. <laughs> what a load of nonsense. Sino has mentioned her before. An extraordinary genius with a veritable wealth of knowledge and talent. A pity that she returned to Mondstadt so long ago. Perhaps in the course of her studies, she witnessed the horrifying side of knowledge. As a student, I once heard this saying. Plants and the land of Dendro share the same history. It could just be one of those things that people say, but I've always felt that there's a deeper meaning to those words. If I meet Lesser Lord Kusanali one day, I wonder if she would explain them to me. Everything happened so fast, and I didn't get the chance to properly thank her. To have a capable and reliable person like her on your side is extremely fortunate. I'm sure she must have many groups trying to persuade her to join their ranks. But she definitely doesn't strike me as the kind of person who would be interested in joining the Academia or the Forest Rangers, so I'll spare myself the inevitable rejection. Madame Farazan possesses an extensive wealth of knowledge. I often invite her to inspect the mechanisms in the rainforest. The next time she's in Gandharvaville, I hope she doesn't sneak Kale more food. Nutrition is like medicine. Moderation is key. Sethos. Pretty interesting guy. He's like a distant cousin of Sinos. Really easy to get along with. Last time he visited us in Gandharvaville, he insisted on showing off his tent pitching skills and had a fishing competition with Sino. <laughs> Kale got really upset because she thought there was nothing for her to do anymore. People say Sethos is good at keeping himself amused. He certainly seems pretty cheerful. But he takes his work very seriously. Hmm. Although I don't know how accurate work is. I think he sees his role at the Temple of Silence as more of a kind of duty. Anyway, if you ever find yourself needing assistance in the desert, I'm sure he'd be a good person to go to. Are you acclimating to the rainforest? I suggest that you keep your eyes and ears open. Take care of yourself, and if anything happens, just flag down a forest ranger. <sighs> Sometimes, I really do envy those simpletons who go around touching and eating anything and everything. 
In their minds, it must feel like miracles happen every day. To better serve the Avidia Forest, I occasionally offer training courses to the Forest Rangers. If you want to split hairs, then yes, these courses would be considered as dissemination of information by the Academia. But what are they gonna do? Lock me up? I dare them. We'll see how many patients suffering from weird and wonderful ailments start flooding into the Bimarstan every day. I'll let you in on a secret. I actually really like the atmosphere in the Grand Bazaar. Business is booming, everyone's so lively, and the theater is full of song and dance. Unfortunately, my ears don't tolerate loud sounds very well. <clears throat> huh? You'll cover my ears for me? Uh, it, it'd be way too hard to walk like that. <laughs> Thanks for the thought, though. I had many beautiful and fantastical dreams as a child, but they vanished from my memory one day after I grew up. Uh, do you still have dreams? Tell me about them. Leaves and flowers often drop onto the ground of the Avidia Forest, sometimes perfectly intact. Leaving them on the ground would be such a pity. I can't help but pick them up and keep them as biological specimens. They can be used as educational materials for forest rangers, or as decorative pieces. Very versatile. Hmm, troubles, let me think. Pollution in the Avidia Forest, adventurers who constantly stir up trouble, and rescue dogs that always want to mess with my tail. But these problems all have solutions. If you're talking about bigger concerns, then I really don't have any. In this regard, the life of a forest watcher is pretty simple. Oh, this may sound strange, but although the blood of a carnivore runs through my veins, mushrooms are the one food that I can't give up. There are many species of edible mushrooms, whether fresh or dried, they all give off a unique scent. Even when stewed with meat, it's the mushroom's aroma that comes out on top. My olfactory system is overly sensitive, so I lack the good fortune to enjoy heavily spiced foods. Quite the shame in Sumeru. <laughs> Excellent ingredients and impeccable seasoning. In short, it's delicious. Hmm, nice flavor pairing. Could you give me a copy of the recipe? I want to put this on the menu for the forest ranger's next meal. Uh, do I need to teach you some new recipes? Happy birthday. I picked out a potted plant in full bloom for you, along with a gardening guide. If anything happens to it, don't hesitate to find me at any time. This plant comes with a forest watcher lifetime guarantee. I'll have you know, a lot of flowers are in season on your birthday. It took me forever to choose one. I'll get you a different species next year. Germinating seeds break through the soil and take root. Ah, seedlings grow, reaching out with their branches and leaves. Branches dotted with flower buds herald the advent of spring. A rich harvest that will lead to even richer ones. <laughs>